guys, good morning. It's Friday, July 22nd, and I'm Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop. And I recently was off a couple of weeks, so I went to a quilt retreat. I went to visit my in-laws. Uh, my brother and his family came to visit, and I went to Boston. So I think I did all of that in like two and a half or three weeks. And it was so cute because in the middle of it, one of my sons came up to me and he was like, mom, this is like way too much family time. And I was like, just smile and just pretend you're good. Just smile and nobody will know. Um, but anyway, because of that, I have a lot of fun stuff to show you. So I was able to, at the quilt retreat I went to, it was in Wimberley. And one of my friends invited me and it was 10 ladies and uh, it was just like a big open room. So I'll just show some photos and kind of talk through it. But this was my car and um, Kevin packed it and he was like, um, is there anything you're not taking? He's like, why are you taking a trash can? Like I took a pillow, I just took everything. So I did take too much, but when I went, I went with a list and um, these are some of the quilts I finished and you'll get to see them, but this is Simply Swoon. And then this is the mini swoon. And then this was a table runner I did of Doug Lico's using Minnick and Simpson and his new book. And then this was uh, a lady named Terry and she was making this from one of the sew sampler boxes from years ago. And then this, I think this is the pillow I made. And yeah, that's one of the quilts I made. So I got a lot of stuff done in four days. And I was really liking this design board right here. So I don't have a design board at home, but it really did make it go really fast. And I had this little corner. And this was me dividing my squares. Um, they had like this big cutting table that nobody was using. So I was able to divide out my squares. And then um, this was one of the first things I did. These were like the um, scrappy strings that I'm gonna show you. And that was my little area. So that was like, I think the first thing I did. And oh, that if you go back, that was the first day because I had makeup on. But I um, went ahead and I was there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then I left Thursday night because I got everything done. So I just had like a little area. I did bring a cart. You can see the cart on the side, my little sewing machine, but it was a lot of fun. Brought my phone charger. So we're gonna just like jump right in and I'm just gonna talk through some of the things I'm working on. I have a lot of projects finished and I have a few things we'll talk about that are kind of goals for the end of the year. I do have some sew alongs planned for 2023. We're currently working on wrapping up the design for the 2023 charity. And I think you guys are gonna love it. Um, so we're working on that, both the quilt side and the cross stitch side. And then we'll also be planning designer mystery for 2023. So we're super busy over here designing and doing a lot of stuff and trying to keep track of like what we're doing now, future in the middle, kind of have stuff everywhere. So I'm gonna just jump right in and just show you progress and kind of talk through different tips and way I was a different ways I was able to do things. So the first thing that I did, I actually did this before the retreat. I wanted to make the Great Granny Squared quilt that's on the cover using the B Platts collection. So I cut the sashing, so I, I have all the sashing here, and I'm just gonna flip through the blocks so you can see them. And I had them numbered, but usually I keep them numbered so that I know where they go in the quilt. Um, but I did do all of these before the quilt retreat. And as you can see, this seam right here is much bigger than a quarter inch. So it's designed where you make it bigger and then trim it down. So I use the uh, 12 and a half inch square ruler to do that. And these are all the colors that Lori uh, put together for us. There's an image on the blog if you wanna make it exactly like this. And I'm just gonna scroll through them pretty slow. So if you wanna take like um, if you want to on the replay, like take pictures and make it exactly like hers, that's what I did. And I just kept them in order of one to 20. And this is super easy and I love that it's so forgiving with the, the wide seam. And it did make it easy that Lori had already picked all the layout, so I didn't even have to think. 
And so some of the colors kind of look wild, but when it's all in the quilt, it'll look great. And then her new Prairie collection just came in. So this has 20 blocks in the center of it, and the book is Great Granny Squared, and the book came out quite a bit a while ago. I think it was like our second book that we published with her. And then her new collection, Prairie, has come in. And I do try to make a quilt out of all of her collections. And the way I had them numbered is with sticky notes, and I had them pinned in. Um, do I keep my books for your designs and then see if you keep them, keep it the same for your other blocks? Do you keep books for your designs and see if you keep it the same as the other's books? I'm not sure what that question means. So Sharon, if you can just re re-ask it. I'm not sure what that means, but I do keep a book of like what SKUs I used. Um, the t-shirt I have on is her brand new Scrappiness is Happiness t-shirt. It is for sale and I put it on the top of the What's New page so that you guys could find it easily. And I did starch my fabric and you can tell because it's pretty, st it's pretty stiff. And it was fun at the retreat to see like all the different things the ladies sewed with because they used a lot of different things than I use. Like they all used AccuCut or AccuQuilt. They used a lot of Martelli. So it was very interesting just to see how different people sew. So yeah, I did these before the retreat. This is my favorite one right here. So this is the this is my one through 20 and then i already cut my sashing to go with it so i'm going to kind of keep that with it and what i'm going to show you next is is for the border Right here, there's a top, right, this border goes all the way around. So what I did is I, um, my nemesis in life is square and a square blocks. I've never been able to get them right, but with our new paper, I actually can. So this was the selfish product. I made this for myself. And um, what I did is I went ahead and pieced them. I kept them, I pieced them in the order that Lori had them laid out. So it was left, bottom, top, right. And then after this, what I will be doing is assembling the entire quilt. There's a couple things I'm gonna do different and I'm gonna show you. And it's not really different, it's just a different technique. So the only thing that I'm gonna do different, I'm keeping all the fabrics exactly like Lori did, except my inner and outer borders, I've already cut length of fabric I feel like using length of fabric on a border is going to keep it very nice and tight because there's no stretch and it's less wavy after I get it back from the quilter. But of course it costs money and waste fabric. So if you want to do that, you would cut those first because you have enough of the yardage to cut those first and then um, cut all your other little pieces. And actually by using the paper, you actually save fabric doing this method than doing it the traditional method. So, you know, there's different ways to change things up, but basically um, I am just keeping these all together and then I'm gonna piece it. And the next time you guys see it, it will be all pieced. I do have the backing pieced. Maybe, maybe I don't. I don't know where the backing is, so I thought I pieced it, but it's probably not here. Okay, and then after that, I had leftover fabric. So like I showed you the, um, that layout I was doing, you saw all those squares. So can you go back to that image, do you think, with all those squares on the table? Yeah, so see, I had that was all the squares that I had left over from making the great granny blocks you just saw. So I went through there 
and piece this and use the design board pictures you saw. And this was all just scrappy. Um, Lori didn't do a layout for this one. Do you want to lock down the images down? Um, no one at the retreat had a featherweight. And um, the retreat, that was just somebody invited me. So I guess you could just Google to find them. I'm not sure. So this is the bonus setting from that same book. And I use C745 Pewter for the background. And the reason why I use that, um, I think in the book she has navy or a different color. And I wanted it to match my bedroom somewhat. So this was kind of a grayish. So I pieced this, this didn't take very long, but it was a great way to use up. And this is also a great quilt I wanted to mention because if you keep your scraps, you could make this quilt using mini charm packs. But if you did that, um, you would have to have four mini charm packs that match, at least for these. Um, but I mean, you would need a lot of mini charm packs or you could use your scraps. This is a great quilt to use scraps. And also this uh, block, also you trim down and put a ruler on top so you don't have to have perfect points. And then when I was at retreat, I also did the backing and I put a little note top left backing for the for the quilter and the way that I did it okay this is sideways okay I'm gonna move this one what I did is I cut two big pieces one big piece here and one big piece here And I just made an extra block and then at the end what I did is I just used a little tiny it's not even centered correctly but just a little tiny block from or label from Sweetwater put it in and that's why it says top left over here um, so that it's over here actually so that the quilter will put it on and it's just a way to put my name in there but I had plenty left over to do that just like a big a little and then a strip and then I just am doing the same fabric for the binding and then we I did the pillow so I didn't finish the pillow but what I did is I used now at this point you have two options if you're gonna do the pillow according to the book the book just has you use it all scrappy because you might not have enough of one fabric to do a ring. But when you're doing this, you could still do the Great Granny Squared ring instead of scrappy if you had enough. And I even think it would look cute as if you used one of your scraps here. So this is a great project to use um, if you just want to, you know just make a pillow you could just make any of the blocks and put it into a pillow and then I cut two pieces that are going to be the the back that's going to be an envelope back and then binding and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this quilted really tight and I'm going to have uh, the same person quilt all three of the quilts the great granny the bonus and this one and then Teresa's going to help me put it into a pillow so now I'm going to answer any questions you guys have on any of the great granny before I go on. I am going to show you the uh, crochet blocks next. So my first question is Christine, how do you start your larger pieces of fabric? Just spray and hang over the drying rack. Yes. So what I do is I have a long rectangular drying rack and if you do a big piece, you just let it go on top and down one side and down another. And then if it's still too long, just drape it around. So yeah, just let it, um, yeah. And then I kind of, if you want it to dry faster, what you can do is open it. So it's one layer instead of two and it will dry twice as fast and give you room to keep starching. Sharon asks, when I make up my designs for next year, do you put them down in books then look to see if you do them the same when you quilt them 
oh, do I, do I make the samples first and then make the book match it? No, you know what we do is we just design and then go from there. And I don't put anything in my book here until like, this is my book for 2022 and I'm on number 37. So I don't put anything in until I'm about ready to sew it. Actually, I need to add 38 because 38 is going to be letters to Santa. Um, but more like when we design and decide what we're going to do, it's more of like an idea. And then I start putting that like in my list of things, but it doesn't really go in my book until I have like a final, final decision on fabric. Cause I do change my fabric a lot. Like I'll say, Oh, I'm going to do this book. I'm going to do this fabric. The next day I'll have a totally different fabric. So I do change my mind quite a bit. So because of that, I, I sometimes have to go a little bit slower. I did change to a different iron. I've been using the big, huge Rowenta. Um, I don't, I just, yeah, I did change. Will I be at Garden of Quilts? No, my daughter joined Drill Team, so I'm not missing any games. I'm going to all the out of town games. Kevin was like, we are what? I'm like, yeah, we're gonna go to all the out of town games. I don't know how we're gonna really do that, but, but we are. The fabric that I used, okay, so for the quilt, I used, the fat quarter bundle. I used 6384 coral for the background, 12037 cayenne for the sashing, and then for my binding I'm going to use 12032 frosting. And then I'm not sure on the wide backing if I did it or didn't do it or forgot or that's probably something I've lost at this point and just have to figure out where it is. And I um and I'll, yes, but then on the bonus, I just use the leftovers from the B plaid fat quarter bundle and use C745 pewter. And I had a lot left over. So like this is what I have left over for the binding of the pillow. So it's way more than I need, but I'm just kind of keeping it together. You make so many quilts. What do you do with them all? Well, I've auctioned some off for charity. Most of them stay here at work. The ones that I happen to super love or really attach to will go home. But um, they just kind of go wherever. I do give gifts, like my sister-in-law's last year got them. Like, I don't think my mother-in-law cares about quilts, so like I won't give her one. Um, if she asks me for one and I give them to my kids, but yeah, I mean, I just, whatever. I don't really, feel like I have to give them or have a place for them because it's more like therapy, like sewing is like therapy to me. So it's kind of like a hobby, but it's kind of gotten out of control. Socialites is starting in the fall. The quilt behind me is layer cake spools. I will give more information on that when we get to it. How do I starch my five inch squares? So I have a drying rack and it has these little skinny poles and I just starch them and put them one by one separately on that and just let them dry and they dry pretty quick. Do I press seams open or closed or does it depend? If I can press to one side without anything butting up, I will. If it's gonna butt up to something else, I will try to press open, but it kind of just depends. Am I doing quilts as gifts this year? You know, I haven't even thought about it. Um, nothing I've made has like, the two quilts I made my sister-in-law's, I felt like they really fit their personality. Um, my niece mentioned wanting one and I was, so I told her, I was like, well, cause she doesn't like have like a, like a particular stuff, kind of like my daughter. Like, I don't know, kids don't have like a color these days or a, I don't know how to explain it. So I told her if she gave me like a color palette or like Pinterest board or something, I can make her something. So that is on my list to do. I just don't know like what direction to go. So I probably need to like text her and see if she forgot. Um, but yeah, I don't have anything like other than that. And I would like to make Emma something, but she's also won't like commit to a color. So I'm not really sure. What size rulers do I reach all the time? So the, the rulers I use the most are, I have the two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, six and a half inch rulers from Creative Grits. Use those all the time. And then I use the six and a half by 18 and a half and six and a half by 24 and a half. 
So with those rulers, I can make any quilt. Now I have other rulers that I use from time to time if I'm doing something like I need a big wide piece, but I use those rarely. So honestly, the six and a half by 18 and a half and six and a half by 24 and a half, I could probably make any quilt with those two. Is there a book that has a variety of quilt settings? All of Lori's big, large books do, like Farm Girl Vintage, Farm Girl Vintage 2, Spelling Bee, Scrappiness is Happiness, which is now in stock and we're gonna talk about in a little bit. Love your quilts from Great Granny Square. Do you do tutorials for the designer mystery? We don't do tutorials for the designer mystery. Hi, Christopher Thompson, I got your mail yesterday, so I'm gonna work on that today. The stocking pattern was awesome. Are you making your family stockings? Uh, no. <laughs> um, should I? Yes. But when everybody was born, I bought them from Pottery Barn stockings and then had them embroidered. And then we got to Christopher and they wouldn't embroider Christopher's because his name is too long. So I had to like take it somewhere and like get it special embroidered and like copy the font. But, um, I should, but I mean, they kind of already have those and I don't know, I just, I just don't wanna. It would be a really cute idea though to like uh, do those and put gifts in them, but we'll see if I have time. The benefit of starching. So um, starching just keeps your fabric really nice and it stretches less when you sew. But I will tell you when I went to the retreat, not one other person starched. Nobody in that room starched. They, I think they thought I was crazy. But I didn't starch there because I wouldn't want the fumes. So it was very different because nobody there sewed like me. Not one person. Not even close. Like everything they did was totally different. So you don't have to starch. I mean, I was definitely the 10% in that room that starched and 90% didn't. So you don't have to starch. My sister-in-law did like her low volume quilt. And she told me at... Um, when I saw her, she was like, oh, I even put it on my bed. My husband let me. And I was like, your husband let you? But like, who runs the show in this house? I'd be like, I would do whatever I want. But yeah, and my other sister-in-law has hers in her living room. And so I thought, well, I could make one that could go at the end of her bed. Or I don't know. I'll figure something out. Square in a square is five inches. Who can you use? Who can you use the four and a half inch? So... Okay, let me see those blocks and I'll show I'll show her and the and the paper. So the square and a square is five inches unfinished. So it's five inches unfinished, four and a half finished. So five inches unfinished, four and a half inches unfinished. So you use it's so Emma seven eighty eight. I would like a suggestion for a pattern for a neutral quilt. Um, we have a book called Cream and Sugar Block of the Month and that is really pretty in neutrals. I thought I saw in one of your pictures that you were using the Rowenta Maven. So I'm using something big, it's Rowenta and it's big. I don't even know what it's called. I am using it because the Alisos were out of stock for so long and mine broke and I had to have something. So I was able to get the Rowenta at that time and I just liked it. So the pros are it's really hot. The cons are it's really hot. So you gotta be careful. Like I feel like I'm gonna burn myself. So I have told my kids like, do not touch that iron. Cause sometimes my daughter thinks she needs to like iron stuff. I'm like, don't, you will burn yourself. So I feel like it gets really hot. Um, I guess a con would be it's much bigger and takes up more space. Um, do I ever wash my fabric? No, I don't. Okay, so now I'm going to move to the crochet. So with the Great Granny Squared, Lori is also having a crochet along. And I have kind of made a decision on what I'm going to do. So this is the free pattern that is on Riley Blake's website. And I kind of kept it on a clipboard so I could not lose it. So I'm going to show you what I did. So I did this at my sister-in-law and mother-in-law's house. And I was kind of, I kept changing my mind on what I was going to do. So a couple of the, so I made a couple of uh, granny squares just using random colors. And you'll see a couple more of them here. 
and a couple more. In here so when I was driving to Houston well Kevin was driving I was making these blocks and then I was just like you know what this is just too much color changes for me I just felt so overwhelmed and I just kept second guessing my choices so I made them and then I thought you know let me see if I can sew them together so I remember how to do the joining of the crochet now on Lori's YouTube channel which is called Lori Holt she has instructions on making the block on our channel we have instructions from her on making the block and turning them into a pillow but when I was at her house she showed me in person how to join them using the single crochet and she did put her quilt her crochet blanket together it's like a hundred and something blocks it's huge it's gorgeous but I had this because this is how you join them so when I got to Houston I said okay it's all too much I'm overwhelmed it's too much I'm feeling overwhelmed so I didn't know what to do so I slept on it and I decided in the morning that what I was going to do is make them all the same because I was just overwhelmed with all this busyness. It just, it's kind of like when you guys ask about how do you do color placement and you get used to it over time. And I can do that in quilts, but in crochet, I just realized I couldn't do that. So I decided to do them all in one colorway. And I thought eight by three would work. But when I got home, I realized nine by three would, would work. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I only have three more to make. So, and I'm going to put it in my sewing room on my little side table that's, uh, that I got at Hobby Lobby. And Lori did a tutorial on how to, so this is, I made all of this in Houston plus all of this because I was like, you know, keeping myself distracted. Um, and it's great fun because uh, I had babysitters. So it was fun. So what I'm going to do is join, I need to add one more. So I made this on the way home. I actually joined these on the way home. And what I'm gonna do is join three rows or columns or however, I'm gonna put them together. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a plain single crochet border. And Lori's video that came out two to three weeks ago gives you lots of options on borders. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna cheat. I'm going to put it on my table and I'm going to FaceTime Lori and I'm going to say, okay, what do I do next? Because on her, she has several colors. Like she has linen, then she has like a blue, yellow. She has a lot of colors. So we're going to see how it looks and then decide. So I'm hoping I can finish this soon. And this little bucket was really good because I just set it in the um, car. And this is how much pink I had left at the end. I was like, oh, I'm going to run out. Um, so all of these blocks actually I only needed one skein so to finish this All I'm gonna be using is five skeins for all of this, which is amazing and I'm using the pink uh, Crochet hook because that's what Lori used so um, lots of fun and what I am planning to do in addition to this I wanted to point out what you can do here is you can do the ridge where it's on the front or this one the ridge is on the back and I put my ridge on the front because that's what Lori did so I tend to if I'm unsure so for example I'm new I'm not new at crochet I started crocheting when I was five but I just don't do it regularly I just copy what someone else does give them credit and it works um, so you can either do the ridge on the front or on the back and what I'm going to do once I'm finished with this because Lori made me four of these little pillows and there's a video oh actually five I have five to make I'm gonna make five of these so I made two I'm gonna unstitch this just pull this out I'm gonna make a pillow out of this and then I'm going to finish these and make pillows. So I'll have five pillows to put in a bowl. I even bought a cute little bowl to um, 
to put them in and then I'll bring the bowl and the pillows and the little thing but that was a lot of fun so that's like the first part now the bucket this was a birthday gift from Lori to me about four years ago and so as I was cross stitching all of these things at my in-laws and sending her photos she was like um you finally used it but it's just from Michael's I don't and we did look I think they have one now that's pink but um it's at Michael's what sewing table from Hobby Lobby okay so it's not a sewing table it's a thread cabinet and I will show you a photo um, and then click on to Ann Boswell's to the point it's paralyzing my creativity okay ironing and sewing station you know what a good idea would be is go to unfinished wood stores those places if you go to the un unfinished wood store you can usually find stuff like that and they can usually make stuff okay so in addition to the crochet I'm gonna leave this here and show you this okay so I'm gonna be totally honest and tell you I didn't sew this Teresa sewed it for me because <laughs> I am not I'm so scared of sewing bags so I had Teresa who works for us make these bags for me so when her when her last collection came out she came out with she knew she was going to be Lori knew she was going to be doing the crochet along so she made a panel and there's a whole video on how to do this on Lori Holt's channel so I'm going to refer you to that but the panel makes one bag now we're sold out of the panels already but we're going to have more in August but I wanted to show you what I did with it is um Teresa and I we just used the outside of the panel but i didn't want to use the ladies so i just pulled a fabric from the one yard bundle because this is um, a one yard home deck and then put that in here and then i used her zippers they are called my happy place zippers and they they go either way so you don't have to worry about if you put them on the right way if you're left or right-handed and then I had Teresa make this and then I can put my little hooks and I used um, part of the panel so you can mix and match and make the bag using home deck now if you're not going to use home deck fabric I would um, put in soft and stable and that is actually I had Teresa make this using soft and stable so it would be very um, let me show you so it would sit up more but you could do this with cotton fabric and the whole point of this is all of your crochet goes in there so tomorrow we have to go somewhere I don't want to say where and I think I'm gonna be there a long time so I'm gonna put I might instead of taking the bucket just put everything in here so these are really cute and sorry we sold out we made it and then we sold out but they're really cute and I like the size of them I like that it's like nice and deep and thank you to Teresa who made them for me because I am not gonna pretend I know how to make a bag now I will say when I watched Lori's video I was like oh I could totally do that but one thing about me is I get I have anxiety really bad and I am like not very sure of myself if I'm not doing quilting so if I'm doing quilting I'm I'm good you start doing this crochet I start second-guessing myself make a bag I second-guess myself and then I just get all this anxiety so I just was like you know what Teresa knows how to make bags let's have Teresa make the bags and then they're gonna actually look good so um for the crochet I know that this color is frosting but I don't remember what the others are um, but it shouldn't be too hard to figure out I had already taken off the wrappers and the more pan panels will be coming in in September and Michelle asked what a mattress stitch is and I have no idea what a mattress stitch is so if somebody can answer her that'd be great another thing that I got done now this was before quilt this was before this was before the quilt retreat I can put that there so I showed you these and remember we had lots of mistakes and this is using our snail trail paper now I haven't used the 12 inch snail trail paper but I do have an idea for it and hoping to use it next year it's kind of like an idea I came up with but what we did is uh, Jocelyn designed the snail trail paper and then she designed uh, this quilt and the, this pattern is free the paper you buy 
But what I did is I went ahead and finished it. So this collection is called Buttercup and Slate, and it's going to come out. It should have already been out, but it's going to be out a little bit later. So I got this uh, pieced and quilted. And right here, I did want to show you this. Now, this is already selling out. So Coriander Seeds is a new white on white. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, it's 10 different SKUs. And they're all in here except for one. The only one I did not use, because what I did is I used a layer cake of Buttercup and Slate for this, and then I used Coriander Seeds for this. And there's one that has text right here. It's super heavy text, and I just thought it was too overwhelming, so that's the only one I didn't use. Now, the layer cakes, we do have plenty in stock, but some of the yardage is selling out. But I wanted to let you know that I ordered more, and it's supposed to come in September. So this is the front. And on the back, this is a wider fabric, I think it's 60 inches by um, Cory Yoder. It comes out with the Buttercup and Slate. And on this one, oh, I forgot to show you. I put the label on the front. So to be honest, what I did, if I can remember this right, because it was so long ago, is I just unstitched a block that was already done and then just added this. But the reason I didn't put it on the back is this is a 60 inch piece. So I would have to cut it up and then sew it back together. I did try to think about how I could like um, maybe applique it down to the center of one of these. And then I thought, you know, that's kind of a little too much for me. It might give me anxiety. So I just put it here and I'll put it in the, like in a corner so it can either be top right bottom left, but I just think that's cute. And I do really love this fabric. And I think that a bag of this would be so cute. Um, the quilting on the snail trail, let's see. I don't, I didn't write down who quilted it. Oh, yes I did. Marion Bott quilted it. And I think she free armed it, I'm not sure. I don't know the name of it, but it's definitely just like a swirl. So, and I know you can find her. Um, she quilts for Sherry McConnell and Chelsea. Stratton, so, um, and you can find her on Instagram. And um, there is a question on the, the what is the difference with, between home deck and quilting, and quilting is just thinner. Home deck has a tiny bit of linen in it. So it's just a, like a heavier weight. And everyone makes home deck a little bit different. So now we're kind of moving into the retreat. So this has been so fun and so different for me. Lori has this sew-in interfacing and we did sell out of it again. We had a ton of it come in and some of it sold out and um, we're gonna have more in a month. So in Scrappiness is Happiness, which I'm so excited, you guys. It came in. Our second shipment came in. It is, this is like the best book ever. It's my favorite of all time. I'm going to show you. This is the instructions. We whited it out so you can't cheat. But this is what I've been working on because I obviously had the pattern um, before. But this book is amazing. I'm just going to kind of flip through so you can see a little bit. It's so awesome. I'm so honored that she lets us publish her books. It's so fun. And everyone in this room right now helped style this little photo. So really fun. So Lori um, had talked about this, and I'm just going to kind of lay out my blocks and talk about why I like it and I guess what it's, what it's doing but basically when moda comes they leave cap sets and i don't want to get rid of those cap sets so i decided to start sewing with them and i took a bunch of them with me to retreat now what i did is um i already cut some strips now there are three size strips they're in the book the sizes and 
just had them ready to go and then I just started sewing and you'll see like on this one I only had enough to do two this one I could make three this one I was able to make four so depending on how much fabric I have is how much fabric I use but what I really like about this is you're just sewing and it's very therapeutic nothing has to match nothing has to be perfect and you just trim it down and one thing that Lori says in the book is that this stabilizer interfacing I always say the wrong word sorry interfacing gives it some stability so she actually did not put batting in her quilt what I'm going to do is I am going to put a I'm going to take one of the wide Shannon minky fabrics and put that on the back and that'll give it enough thickness so you can see some have four some have three and I cut all of the squares to make all of the quilts so this is how many I have left let's see I have 53 done and 27 left and more interfacing mid-August so this has just been I just really liked it it's gonna give me a beautiful quilt it's a great way to use scraps and what I find is if I have just a little bit of something I just put it on the end you know so you can even use those little pieces but for me it's just been it's just fun I don't know how else to explain it so and I did try to mix like starting in the center with skinny fat I just kind of and then this one this is B plaids I had a lot left over so just a fun way to make blocks and I'm hoping this one will be done by Christmas I guess this could be a good gift for my niece I don't know she's it's hard with teenagers you know you can't tell what they so my plan with this is I've got to finish these and Moda is coming or Moda just came and what I'm going to do is once I do the live stream or once I do the video showing all those cap sets I'm going to sew them up and I'm going to do the same layout as in her book but you can see I've got like Layla Boutique, Ann Sutton, Lori Holt, Sherry and Chelsea, Lori Holt, Layla Boutique, Camille, Cory Yoder, Fig Tree, Camille, Brenda Riddle, April Rosenthal, Deb Strain, Corey Oder, Sweetwater, and Fig Tree. And I'm going to, I'll show you in the layout what I'm going to do. Okay, so in the layout, she has them rotated in a circle like that. And so I'm going to show you kind of what that looks like. And there's a couple things you can do. So I'm going to pick four random. So in the book, she has it like this. So you could do it like this all throughout and just make sure you've got four, you know, four by four. You could also do them all like this you could do all of one row this way and all of one row this way so it would give like a zigzag effect so there's so much you can do with this and it's just a way the only thing you have to invest in is the interfacing and you need four packs of interfacing for this quilt um, so and um, Amy says a mattress stitch is a way of joining knitting so it doesn't show so any kind of questions you have on on uh, crochet I would say ask Lori on her channel because I am just literally copying everything Lori's doing um, but when I do this one I'm going to make sure that I'm gonna do it like this I think and I'm not gonna add a border I'm just gonna put a binding I'll probably put a really strong or a really 
light, either a really dark binding or a really light binding so that it either blends in or sticks out. And I'll probably decide that when I get closer to being done. But I really enjoyed this one. This is just fun, just a fun way to use up your scraps. Um, it'd be cute. I really think this would be so cute if you like had a lot of fabrics that are baby or child friendly, because this would be a cute, cute, cute baby quilt. And I did all of, um, I did some of these before retreat, some at retreat. And the way that I planned them was, like I said, I, I had my fabrics cut, starched, and I had them kind of rolled together into like little rolls. And then I just did them all at one time. And it's just fun, really fun. So the next thing that I worked on was the Swoon Mini. And so I went from this, which is like, oh, let's have fun just stitch and listen to everybody talk to this which hello you need to pay attention <laughs> so I struggled with this because I made these and I was like that doesn't look right that looks like a bug I was like that looks like a cockroach I don't know I just was like something's wrong I had been basically listening to everyone talk at retreat and just listening to their life stories and I was just not paying attention. So I had to stop. I actually put my headphones on and told people, okay, sorry, I have to concentrate. <laughs> so what I did is this pattern, um, Camille is having a swoon along and I have only made a couple of blocks. I've never made like quilts from it. So I thought, you know what, now's the time. She's doing a sew along, why don't I join? So on this one, um, I used Nantucket Summer. I used the same, I used the background from Dwell, I think. And then I just used some Fat Aids. And what I had to do is I did one block first. And I'm so glad I did because when I was making this block, I made all four of these wrong. So if I had made all four blocks at one time, I would have 16 units wrong. Luckily, I had enough to fix it. Um, I was a little bit concerned I wasn't going to. So I always, when I'm making a quilt, make one and then repeat. So I made this and then I just, for my backing, this was like the easiest backing I've ever made is I just, it's crooked too, sorry, but I just added a little border, tucked it under, and I can actually show you the brand new two things that came in. The, um, I'm trying to think of what they're called, hot hemmers and hot rulers. So this is what I use for hot hemmers and hot rulers, is these. There's two smaller ones. Well, they just came out with bigger ones, and I'm so excited. So this is, um, I think they're called like fat or large or something, but these are the new hot hemmers. And I'm so excited. So I had to I had to show you these. I love this product. Hardly anyone uses it. They don't sell well for us, but I love them. And if you're ever, they come in handy when you need something for like a kid's project too, or like, I feel like I've used them so many times on those like science boards and science projects, just folding stuff over. But I just stitched it down and this is gonna be my binding. So it's gonna look like this. So this took me quite a bit and I did get distracted. Oh, thank you Valeria Bauer for the super chat. She says she's so happy I'm back that she missed me. Oh, thank you, that's so nice. And I'm really excited about this because um, I definitely can use this one in my house. So like you talked about, you know, some stuff I use, some stuff I don't, this one's definitely going to my house. So I made that and then after that, I was ready to make the big swoon. So I bought the kit. We only have six kits left. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that too. Is So I saw this on Instagram, you know, nine months ago when Camille first showed it. And it became the cover of the Moda book, fabric book. So this, and then I use the same background on the mini. So what I did on this one is I just made sure that my stripes went the same way. I went really slow. I did use triangle paper 
and I did use glue. And another thing at retreat, nobody used glue. So um, I did show one lady, I was like, oh, cause she's in the sew sampler box. So she, I knew she already had the glue. I wasn't like selling her glue. She already had the glue. So I was like, look how you use it. I was trying to show her. Um, I was like almost depressed cause I was like, nobody here sews like me. It's so, it's so sad. So this, what I did is I bought the Simply Swoon kit and I measured my wall. The kit makes the 72 inch, but I have been, there's a wall in my house I wanna put a quilt on and 42 inches is gonna fit perfect. Now, what I'm gonna do on this one is I'm gonna quilt it. Before I bind it, I'm going to trim it down to fit the wall. So I just need to remember to do that. So I did, and I accidentally on this one cut the border bigger because I was following the wrong section. And then I thought, well, that's good because then I can cut it down. I'm gonna use this binding. And so on this, I just followed Camille's uh, colorway. And then I just made, uh, just put two pieces of fabric together and then put a label on top. Now, if I was at home, I probably would have sewed it in, but on retreat, I was like, you know what? Let's just do whatever. So that was that, was that and I still made more. And this was in four days, so. But I'm excited to send these to get quilted because they're so pretty. And Janet Wright Riddling, Super Chat, I am addicted to your videos and love seeing you each week, even if you're not live. God bless you and so on. Oh, thank you. So this, I think, was like the third thing I worked on at retreat. So we came out with this free pattern and Jocelyn designed it. It's called Layer Cake Spools and it's actually the one that's behind me. So if you want to see it, it's um, the fabric collection. Can you scroll over Jocelyn? Sorry. I can't see what it says. Okay, slow stroll is the collection and fancy that house design. So we did a video and it's a free, completely free pattern because we give you guys so much free stuff. So what I did, I used another Camille collection. I used Dwell. It's coming out in November. And this one is layer cake friendly. And what I did on this one, and I did it a little bit different because I was at retreat and I just didn't want to work with like huge big pieces. So I sewed in a label on the bottom right of my quilt. So I had the block made and then I just sewed it on top. I sewed it, how did I do? Oh, I think I sewed this seam in and then had to overlay it here, but this seam is sewn in. I did, I don't know what I did, but I loved this pattern and I just thought it'd be so fun. So this one was really easy. And on this one I did starch my layer cakes and the pattern still worked because you make it bigger and you trim it down. So this one was a lot of fun. I love the green and I'm not a green person. And these will look, I'll show them to you when they're all quilted. And so this is the pattern and then I decided to use this on the binding and I might, uh, Teresa's gonna do my binding. I might have her do bias, not sure. And then here, I think that I actually did the label twice. So I have a label on the back and I have a label on the front. And that is called Ultimate Kimberly Jolly. I can't remember a dang thing I do. Everyone who works for me knows I can't remember jack, squat, diddly, nothing. I can't remember anything because I do so many things. So at the retreat, I did this and I forgot, and then made that. So that'll be cute, I'll have two, two backings. But that is, honestly, I do it all the time. And then the second to last thing, I'm almost so embarrassed to show you guys, oh my goodness, so embarrassed. So I love the Table Tastic books. I have all three, and I've never made one from it. So I thought, you know what, I've got to make something because I love Doug, I always wanna support him. So I decided when I did the trunk show that I really liked the star 
um, let me see, this one right here. It's called Waybridge, Waybridge, and it is a hot mess of a quilt. So, in, not the, yeah, I guess the entryway in my house, I have this big, long table, and I wanted this to fit it exactly. So I started cutting too late at night. So I'm a half inch off. So I'm hoping when we quilt it that I can just put the binding right, just make it a little bit bigger. Um, but this is the most ridiculous, look at this quilt. It is like curved stars. These pieces were just so small and I didn't do that great of a job. And I think it's because I was at a retreat. I wasn't near my stuff, but it is embarrassing how I was so embarrassed when I was done. I was like, oh my goodness, see my, like my pressing's not great. I did take my own ironing board and my own iron to retreat. I think people kind of thought I was crazy, but, um, but it is definitely not, it's not, that is not like people say, oh, it'll quilt out. Uh-uh, that is not going to quilt out. So when this comes back, we're going to, I'm going to have to do some magic or something to make it like, that's not going to quilt out. But I guess because it goes on that table, it'll be fine because um, I'll just put a candle on the curve or something. So this is kind of how it looks. And to make it bigger, I just cut each side a little bit bigger. I just didn't cut it long enough. And this had 12 blocks, but I needed it wider. So I cut this a little bit wider and then I made eight additional blocks. And this is Isabella by Minnick and Simpson. And one thing, yeah, see my, my, my piecing is horrible, but I think that was kind of a lesson. I mean, I don't know. I'll probably never go to a retreat again. I never have time, but, um, I think taking to retreat anything hard like this is a little bit, probably not the best idea because I do take a lot of pride in my work and whoever quilts this is going to be like, who made this? This is not Kimberly Jolly's work. It just doesn't, it just didn't come out the way that I would have wished. I mean, you can see how wavy it is, but, um, I guess that was my lesson, but I am happy to finally have a Doug quilt. Okay. So let's, um, I'm going to take questions on any, so any questions you have on any of that, that I showed, Definitely ask now because I'm going to move on to other stuff after. Let's test the theory of quilting out. I know. it's. I don't know. I don't think it's going to quilt out. Is there a layer cake fab pattern you can use a focus fabric? Um, layer cake lemonade would probably work. It's free. It's on Fat Quarter Shop. What white fabric do I like to use? 100% this one. 20708-36. I have a bolt at work. I have a bolt at home. I love it, and I'm surprised it's not in any of these quilts. Um, okay, so Nantucket Summer, I'm going to ask your question in a second, but the backing, wait, stay on it. So the backing fabric for the designer mystery has been reprinted. The white on white, we have reprinted. So basically, we have to order a huge amount those two were reprinting. Every other SKU in Nantucket Summer is sold out. Moda is not reprinting. So the only two, and we're gonna have them, we still have a little tiny bit, like 70 yards of the white on white, but when that's gone, we're gonna have more in September. Um, I was trying to read that. Was it the same question? It's okay, I think I answered it. Am I going to join the Tall Tale Summer book with Kate Basil? I haven't heard of it, so I don't think so. Why use stabilizer in a quilt? So that, those blocks, can I see one of those blocks, please? Let me see if I have one, no. Um, that's just a method. Sorry, I dropped something. That's just a method if you look at it. You could use a muslin and just like a cheaper muslin or something and sew on it, but it gives it stability so it doesn't get wavy. If you just started adding strips, it kind of get a little bit wavy. So it just adds some stability to it and it makes it really fun. Um, thank you to the Bathola. I can't express how much you have helped me in my quilting journey. You're a rock star. Oh, thank you. That's so nice. I want to use a background with text on it, but I'm having figure trouble figuring out which one will not be too distracting. The only white on white with text that I know of is is in Coriander Seeds. 
uh, text on fabric used to be more popular about four years ago it was like the rage so I feel like there's not as much out there now as there was so um so now I'm gonna take a break and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset kind of and we're gonna show some quilts but what I would love for you now to do is drop any questions you have in because I'm happy to answer any questions on any of the methods or you know anything I do and then just always remember you don't have to quilt like me when I went to retreat no one was doing anything not even like remotely similar to what I was doing and so it was kind of like a wake-up call kind of like you you don't know what you're doing like you you just do it your way but not everybody does it my way so just because I do it doesn't mean that anybody else does so I'm gonna take a break and I will be back in a little bit
So uh, what I have next to show you, I think some of you guys are gonna just totally love it. So Tula Pink, last year in 2021, she had this quilt hanging at the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show. And if you look at it, I know you guys have seen it on her channel, but I'm gonna kind of show you in detail. But Kevin loved this, so he, he had Free Spirit put together a quilt kit for us and we're pre-selling it. Just remember the pattern, you do have to buy the pattern separately. So the kit, and then this is exactly what you get in the kit. It's just a ton of fabric and it's great because you get to get all of the pieces. So I'm gonna show you. Um, so Tula Pink pieced this one and Angela Walters quilted it. And um, the description that was on the show says, the butterfly quilt is essentially a block sampler arranged into the shape of a butterfly. The blocks were originally test blocks for Tula Pink's book, City Sampler, that were not, that were not, un, they were not used in the final book because of size, fabric, or construction. So instead of throwing them out, she filled them in and rearranged them into the butterfly. So I'm going to kind of move this around to show you the quilting and the fabrics and the best thing about this kit is you get all of the fabrics it's i'm gonna actually hold it because it's just too there look at that quilting that's so pretty so this is the top okay i'm gonna hold it on one side so it's pretty big Show the bottom. Go up. Okay. Right there. Hold it tight. Try. It's so big. Okay, so I'm gonna put it back on the table. And I'm gonna show you some of the some of the some of, I'll just show you some of the cool tools. So there is some applique. So this is applique. It looks like she, it actually looks pieced. And there's half square triangles, pieced blocks. This, I would, if it was me, I would use half square triangle. Now, the one thing I wanted to show you on this one is the quilting thread Angela Walters used is blue. And I am gonna show you another quilt in a second made by a friend of mine. But this first one, if you look at the cover of the quilt, this quilt is so big, guys, sorry, it's really hard to show. If you look on the quilt, there is a border at the top and the bottom, but not on the side. And that way it's 88 by 94. And on the back, this is what Tula put, and my friend also used the same. So Tula Pink does videos on Facebook, and she gives lots of behind the scene peeks at like future collections, her studio, all of those things. And so this kit should come out next month, and um, it's just a one-time run. So we're gonna have the kits, and once they sell out, we're not gonna have them again. But it's a unique way. I would actually make this. It's so pretty. Um, but my friend at retreat had it. So I'm gonna show you hers. And the best thing about showing these together is you can see the different quilting. And she won. So my friend who made it, her name is Ter Terry McGilney, McElhiney. The quilter is Gretchen Tom Thompson. Okay, it's upside down. And so I wanted to show you, I think I have it upside down now, sorry, but I'm, I'm just gonna leave it. Sorry, we have too many things going on. But what I wanted to show you is my friend Terry, what she did is she loves Tula Pink and she told me that, and I'm calling her my friend, but I literally just met her at retreat, so, 
I, and then I was like, do you think I could borrow your quilt? So, um, her husband brought it, but she won best of show in Johnson city and Johnson city is actually where LBJ grew up and actually where my grandfather grew up. Um, and this was the ribbon she won. So, so exciting, but I wanted to show you what she did because i said well how did you make yours and she said well i'm just a huge fan of tula pink and every time a bundle comes out i just buy it so she just followed and she has very few substitutions the only substitution that she has is like right here the center of the butterfly and then on the borders she wanted hers to be wider so she added an extra border and you can see the quilting on this is custom quilted, just like the other one. So Gretchen Thompson did this one. Terry McElhiney made this one. And she, she just was able to use her stash. So I think that's great because I thought, well, I wonder how she made this. And she said, oh, I have every bundle Tula Pink has ever done. So, and this, this one is, um, she used a thinner batting. So just feeling it, you can just feel the difference. So there's lots of lots of options when you um, lots of options when you're quilting because you can she like I said she wanted black here she wanted it bigger so she added that and she used a lighter batting she still did custom quilting and I asked her how long this took her and just like I said earlier I can't remember what she said but I, it wasn't a year. It was less than a year so um and i'm gonna hold hers up i'm gonna reverse it though and then hold it up so you can see how much wider it is it's so much wider because then it'll fit her bed so you get that different effect of the center with that black and white, it pops out a little bit more. So it's so big, so big. Okay. Okay, so I am going to answer questions and then I'll move on to my next thing. But, um, oh my gosh, that was, that was my workout for the day because I don't work out, so there's my workout. But just to remind you, Tula Pink made the first one, Angela Walters quilted the first one, and we have a photo of that now online. We're pre-selling it. Free Spirit put the kits together for us. The second quilt, Terry McElhiney made it, and then Gretchen Thompson quilted it. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna answer questions before I show you other stuff I've worked on. It just wasn't at retreat. Deb is asking if we're doing a Scrapping Assist Happiness Trunk Show. Yes, we are, and we're scheduling that for August, and we're scheduling it, and um, the reason we're not doing it right away is we're scheduling it with Lori so that she can be on the screen at the same time. Wash all of my fabrics, can I still starch? Yes, you can. Thank you to Super Chat for Marty Klein, and thank you to Super Chat Cynthia Mitchell, I don't have the confidence to go to a retreat, so I love having your videos. I've learned a lot and have some beautiful quilts pieced and finished following your instructions. Oh, thank you. Do I make pillowcases to match each quilt? No. No, I don't. I should. My favorite layer cake pattern is probably layer cake spools now, but before it was layer cake lemonade. Can I give you advice on how to get the stripes to match up on the flying geese for the first block of the month? So, um, you just have to, when you're cutting them, you have to cut two horizontally and two vertically. And if you just cut it that way, it'll come out right. You can delete that one. Will I be getting any more of the fabric for the heartfelt charity? No. And so that's something to remember. I mean, I think some of you guys get frustrated that we sell out of stuff and we do, but we don't have enough money to buy the fabric forever because if it doesn't sell, we're just sitting on that money. So we don't intentionally sell out, but at the same time, we only buy what we know we can afford to pay. So, you know, sometimes we sell out. 
what thread weight do I use? So when I am sewing, I use 50 weight RFL thread. Will I carry the dotty thatched by the yard in white from Tulip Tango, please? Um, I don't know if we bought that or not. We'll have to write that down and I'll have to look later. What's next for my schedule this week? So, my schedule is, I would like to, I have to finish a bunch of cross stitch. My next goal before I go back to, well, my next two goals are to finish the crochet table runner and then to get back to work on Moda block heads because I am behind, I'm sure some of you have noticed, but to get caught up on that. And then next, after this, I'm gonna be showing you some stuff that I'm doing in the future. So I'm gonna answer the rest of that in a little bit. Is there a fabric color you would absolutely never use? Yes, purple. Can you let me know what pantograph is on your snail trail? Um, contact Marion Bot, M-A-R-I-O-N, and if you just search her name, you'll find her on Instagram. If I put an iron on label, didn't sew it down and it's coming loose, any suggestions? I would just uh, go through all the layers and just stitch it around on the edge with the sewing machine. And stitch length. Okay, I use a 1.5. That is not for everyone. If you start pulling your, if you are not like super experienced and have to pull your stitches out very little, it will frustrate you. So I used to use a 2.0, but I use a 1.5 now. Oh, and then Sandy Miller, thank you for the super chat. Thanks for everything you do and for so many free patterns. Yes, I think, you know, we really give a lot of free patterns. We give a lot of free content. We hope you notice. Um, we're not always on here trying to like, you know, sell, sell, sell. We're trying to like create a community, give you free things, give you a way to use up your scraps. And that's why when I was talking about the Tula butterfly is like, she said, you know, all she had to buy was the background and the pattern because she already had the fabric. So, um, you know, just use what you have. It's a great idea. Maybe the table runner should have stabilizer on it. Yeah, maybe that table runner was, I bit off a little too much. Oh, and then the two super chats just went away. We'll pop them back up. Okay, two super chats just fell away, so we'll get them back up. Maybe the, oh. Yeah, go back to that screen. Terry Brooke, thanks Kimberly and everyone at Fat Quarter Shop, thank you. And then, let's see, go back to the other one, there's one more. Scroll down. Oh, I read it already. Okay. You made so many quilts. Is there a favorite quilt? Um, I have the Moda. It was like a Moda sampler that I made a couple years ago. I really like that. There was a red and white quilt that I made as a sew along with Lori. I really like that. And I really like the um, charity quilt we did that's a spool. Spoology, Threadology. Threadology. So those those are ones that I that come to the top of my mind because they're in my house. They're like, you know, like on the back of a couch or something. So those are the ones I use the most. Okay, so now I'm going to show you progress on other things. These are just things I didn't do at retreat. And I might have already shown you this. I just can't remember. So Bliss Quilts Along is what we're doing this year for Sew so Sampler. And so these are the blocks from April, March, and May. April, May, and June, sorry. I obviously cannot read. So April, May, and June, and then July, um, I will keep showing you. And so I'm gonna make them, and I'm gonna sew these into a, the quilt, that's the finishing that you will get in March of 2023, and I'm sewing along. Joanna Figueroa of Fig Tree Quilts, she is the fabric designer, but she also designed these and the quilt. So if you're in the sew sampler box, I encourage you to use the cards and sew them, and don't feel like you have to sew them in the fabric that we show, because we have a picture here that we show you the fabric every time, and we just have the instructions covered up. But, um, you can always use your scraps for this, and I love this one. This one's going to be really pretty, and the finishing, just as like a hint, just as a hint, um, it's going to have a lot of red in it. 
And then the other thing that I am so behind on, okay, Moda blockheads. So I thought I would kind of show you kind of my methodology. So Moda blockheads comes out with a free pattern once a week on the Moda blog and on that Moda fabric designers blog also. So we put together a free layout because there are two different sizes that they're offering this year nine inch finished and four and a half inch finished. So Jocelyn put together this setting and I think I'm going to add an inner and outer border like this, but you could just make it bigger and just have it scrappy with no border. But what I do just to show you is, because I, I get disorganized. I don't even know why I have these printed. Um, what I do, this is the electric quilt. So I just draw it out and I drew it as one quilt, and then I just keep all the patterns together that I sewed with in here, and then I, I write on here, done, so that I remember where I'm at, and the reason that that is so important is I am so behind. So I think I'm two blocks behind. So these are some of the newer blocks I've done. I am going to catch up soon. And this would be, so that stabilizer I was talking about, you could do that on a block like this. You couldn't do it on a block like this because you have too many seams. But anytime you're doing a block with just straight seams, you could use stabilizer if you wanted. And this one was, um, I definitely used triangle paper on these. And this is the stitched collection by Fig Tree. So these are the ones that I have that are small that I don't have a big block to go with it yet. So... this one so each of the blocks have a big block three small blocks and an accent and i'm using this accent right here so this is going to be on the second row and then my first row is done so i finished this and i'm kind of just putting them as i have enough completed i'm just adding to it the only critique i would give myself is right here these are too similar so this brown and this brown it looks ugh. but once I'm not gonna pull it apart because once I get other blocks around it it'll take away from that hopefully so this I am hoping to get um, caught back up on that soon and then after that, and this one goes all the way to September 28th. And when, as I sew, I'll show you. The next thing that I also worked on that you guys have seen is the Sherry McConnell free block of the month, 2022. So what I wanted to show you is through June, she has instructions for six inch finished and 12 inch finished. And what I did is with the Bella Beyond Bella Fabrics, I made six six inch blocks and I bought this little cube at Michael's and then Ashley took it and she put um, three blocks in. So she put the bottom two sides and then she put a bunch of polyfill and then she, she added. And it's really cute. So this is just something, you know, you could put in a kid's room, you could just put on your desk, just a different way to, I'm always thinking of different things to do with blocks. So this one's done. My little small, my smallies, they're all done. So perfect. But as far as my blocks, June came out since we last talked. And July came out. And then these are my previous. Now on this one, I have, um, so there's seven done. And what I'm doing is I'm doing all navy churned ashes, and then I'm using green and gray in the center, and then I'm gonna use the blue polka dot on the border, and I'm probably gonna use the layout that Sherry designed. So just so you know, this is free on Sherry McConnell's blog. And I'm sewing along. Um, this is a, let's see what collection I used. I don't think I wrote it down. Um, Layla Boutique. It's a Layla Boutique collection. And then from there, a new thing that came out since I saw you last is 
I'm going to do pop-ups of the images. So the first pop-up is what I saw on Facebook. And you can see there's different rows and different words. So where you see Jolly, right? I think we are, do the other one. This is the original one. And this is Moda's colors. And those are all Bella solids and it's listed on Moda's blog if you want to make it like that. So where you see the word cider, now you see Jolly. So what I did is I switched out two of the words. I switched out cider with Jolly. And then if you go back to the other one, there's a Rudolph. And I switched that to holiday. And I decided to use, um, I'm gonna show you the pattern. So the pattern is a primitive gatherings. It's an older pattern, so you might already have it. It's called mini alphabet and it's in paper, but because Moda didn't really give an advance, like I didn't know anything in, in advance about this. I asked Lisa Bonjean if we could sell her PDF and she's letting us. So the instructions for all of the blocks are in here. The layout will be on Moda's website. So the first two that they have shown They showed Santa. And so, like I said, you just follow the instructions for making the block. And then these pieces here, you get the instructions on Moda's site. And Mary. So I am caught up with this one. And the only two word changes are um, what I showed you. Now I'm gonna show you the fabrics. And talk. A, I'm, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I picked my fabrics. So the way Moda has it listed is they had four greens. So this is Christmas stitched. And I love everything fig tree. And she always has great greens and reds. So I just went through and picked four greens and four reds. And the way I did that, I brought all the fabrics. I felt like using this one was going to be too difficult because I would want all of the houses facing the same direction and I feel like it has too much white in it and it's distracting. So I took this one out. This one, there's no way, there's too much white. Your letters will not show up. So if you cut that, you're just gonna, it's not gonna look good. This one I also felt was too busy. This one definitely would work. I just, for some reason, this was like my fifth choice. This one, I didn't like the two tones of the colors. And then on the greens, the same thing, the house, and then the same thing, these were just too, too busy. Now I did consider putting some of the brown in, but then I decided not to. So I'm just gonna be using these four greens and these four reds. And then I'm using this background from, and there's a fig tree favorites that you can use that's on our website that you could use. And then I'm gonna put this on the back, the backing. Because if I put, um, like if I do, when you piece a backing, you're never gonna get it to line up exactly. So like, you know, it's gonna be like this, like when you piece it together and it will look fine because it's scrappy. So um, all the information, this one is supposed to finish 72 by 92. Um, and again, you have to have the pattern for the letters. I am gonna give some tips in a future live stream on my method of sewing the letters. And basically what I do is you cut each block, put it on a design board, put your fabrics, um, draw your lines, add your glue, and then do your next letter and just stack a bunch of design boards and then you can sew all at one time. Okay, so then I'm gonna answer questions and then I'll show you some different, we have a lot of what's new stuff. I'm actually gonna hold most of it till next week. I'm gonna show you, cause we've gone too long. I think we have too much. Um, so I said the dimensions, let's see what pattern would you advise for a quick flannel throw for a male turning 20. Queen of Kil Quilting, AKA Kimberly, we love you and all you do. Thank you. Oh, thank you. What needle is best for quilting? I noticed some batting comes out with the needle. Okay. 
So on that, I would probably use a Microtex because they're more, um, they're more, uh, they're finer. But I would also like defer to somebody who quilts like Gina Tell or anybody. I would just ask them because I don't actually quilt. So I don't have a lot of experience with that. I did want to show this. We came out with this free tutorial and it's on our blog and it uses some of those home deck fabrics that I showed you. And so we just took some of the home decks from that bundle because we already had the bundle that we used, I showed you earlier that we put in with the bags. Now the home deck, it just has a different feel and it's a little, it's thicker. So if you wanna make one of these oven mitts, there's a completely free template, completely free instructions, and then you just use fabric. We used home deck so it would be thicker and last longer and you just need regular batting and then this um, heat resistant batting. So that's what I have guys. And um, the, the alphabets from Lori's book will not work. Those are different sizes. Um, so guys, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Um, any questions you have on anything I showed today, I'm happy to answer, so just put them in the comment box and I will be back next week. Bye.